We are talking about place value and specifically how do we use place value with our secret code cards. So the secret code cards are a specific tool that we use in expressions. So we're going to talk about that to talk about what that tool is, how we use it for all of our place value number sense systems. So thanks again for joining us. I'm going to share here our screen about the secret code cards and how it works in our place value understanding. And here we go. All right. So here are our goals for today. So when we look at place value cards, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what, how do I use them for place value? We're going to talk about using like what place value even is. Okay. How we use the secret code cards, what secret codes are, how we're going to organize our secret code cards and what the secret code cards look like at every single grade level. Okay. So first of all, what are secret code cards? Well, I'm going to tell you that they're called secret code cards because there's secret zeros hiding in these numbers. The secret code card really is a place value card. If you have different resources or curriculum, a lot of times they'll call them a place value card. They're not unique to math expressions. In fact, it is a Montessori tool that was adapted by Montessori, but what is unique to the place value cards and expressions is the back of the cards. So the back of the cards are what help us to build the quantity of the number. And it depends on what grade level you're in as to what the back of your cards look like. There really is not a ton of math manipulatives and math expressions, which tells me that when there is a tool, something like the secret code card, that when it says, hey, use your secret code cards, we're saying it's that important. Like, don't skip it. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some of the management because most people don't use the secret code cards because of management issues. So let's look at what those secret code cards really look like and what they are at every single grade level. Now there's blue ones. So I'm actually going to go to this next slide deck here. All right. I'm going to show you that we have blue. Look here. We have purple. That's the purple version is the student version for kindergarten. The blue version is what is the version for first grade through sixth grade. And then fourth and fifth grade, you also have a decimal green set of secret code cards. Okay. And I'm going to show you here as we get into them, but I want you to see this picture like right here. So notice that they have their paper version. So this would be more of a second grade, maybe even a third grade classroom where they're working on three digit numbers. You can see on the left that we have our decimal secret code cards for our fourth and fifth grade. So this is a fifth grade example where they have their hundredth grid on the whiteboard. They're going to use that to represent or to draw the decimals. They're going to build it with their secret code cards, and then they're going to build it with play money. So we're showing all of these concrete ways of building that number. But remember, we talk about a number having two rules. So a number not only has to have, not only has to look like the number, it has to count to the number. So I'm actually going to take you on Think Central for just a moment. I'm on a Think Central 2018 account. If you're in anything earlier than 2018, you do have the iTools, but as you and I know, though, they're not fabulous. So getting access to this, you can even use an evaluator account to get access and be able to look at these eye tools. So if I were to go to like kindergarten, take a look at what it looks like here. They're going to have these number tiles. So there's our purple. So I've watched kindergartners do this, right? I've watched kinders where I say, I want you to build the number 15. And when they build the number 15, they build it with a one and with a five. Okay. So now I'm going to say, what are my two rules of a number? So the first rule of the number is, does it look like the number. And you look at that and you're like, yeah, it looks like 15. Okay. So if I say, and let me just make sure that we have, I think we have our right number showing. Yeah. Okay. So number 15. So if I turn it over, that's what it looks like. If I turn it over like this, now it has the dot representation on the back. So the second rule is, does it count to 15? And when you count those dots, you get six. So you're thinking, no, that doesn't count as 15. So I must not have used the right numbers. So we're not saying in kindergarten, I want 15 as a one and a five because that's not true. Foundational place value here is 15 is always a 10 and a five. And when I cover them up or I stack them on top of each other, they're called a secret code card because there's a secret zero hiding in there. So it's a 10 and a five. When I expand them and I say 15 is a 10 and a five, and then I turn them over, I get 15. So the front of the cards match the back of the cards. Well, take a look to see what happens. If I start going into, let's just say another grade level and I go to like first grade here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to first grade. Actually, let's go into second, just beef us up just a little bit. First grade, you're just gonna look the same. So remember you have a set of laminated cards, cards that are like a card stock that came in your math expressions kit. Those are not consumable. You don't get a new one every year. You only get them the first time you buy the kit. Then you have to use the paper version that come in the student 
workbooks, the student homework book, the, student, the teacher resource book. So you have paper versions. So a lot of our teachers, that's what they use. Let's take a look. So if I were to make the number like 23 and I have those two numbers, I stack them. If it, it solves the, does it look like the number? Yeah, it looks like 23. I can expand them. Does it count to the number? I count the back. I have two tens that I can see my 21s and I have three ones. It's 23. So in grades one through three, you have your cards that have a quantity drawing on the back. So the students can build the number and then they see that that three is not a three. That is a 30. That three is not a three. It's a 300. And that is foundational place value. Okay. So now if I keep going and I keep showing you this, I could go into fourth and fifth grade. Fourth grade is going to have the word name on the back of their cards. And that is because they also have to, as part of their standard, they have to write the word name form of these numbers. If I go into fifth grade, theirs is going to have the money on the back of their cards. So if I look here, you're going to notice now that I have my whole numbers. Okay. If I can turn these over, I'll show you. So these are going to be used at all the grade levels. It's going to go up to, of course, 9,999. But let's just say I do 7,000, okay? And I turn it over. Notice it has the dollar amount on the back. But again, I build the number. I can expand the number. And then I can count the number of what is the value of each of those digits. I get into my decimals and you can see the same thing. Now I have a tenth or a hundredth, I should say. And I have eight tenths. And so now I can stack them. And instead of covering up the back zero, I cover up the front zero. And you can see I have 81 hundredths. When I expand it, I can turn the cards over and notice I have eight dimes and a penny. So I have 81 cents. The back of the card matches, right? So when we look at the secret code cards, we're going to use these now to round. We're going to use them to add, subtract, compare. So I can even use these right now. If I were to just do the number, let's say 200. 24. Okay. We'll just go simple here. Okay. So I'm going to go 224 and I say, Hey, I want us to round that number to the nearest 10. Well, I can expand the number and I can say, well, what is the 10 I'm on? I'm on 20. So I'm either going to stay at 220. Let's get that number down here. Okay. So this is called a rounding frame in expressions. So we build the number that we have 224. I build the number that I could go down to, I could be at 220. Okay. Or I can be at the 10 that happens before, which is 230, right? So if I take those cards, now I see my two options. Well, I'm going to turn these cards over. So I either have, I have 24, but if I turn this card over, I have three tens and this card, I have two tens. What would I have to do to this number to get either to here or to here? Well, to get to 30, I'm going to have to add six more ones. To get to 20, I'm going to have to take away four ones. It is more work or more to get to 240 than it is to get to 220. This number would round to 220. And I can see it based on the place value drawing that's on the back of those cards. So I build a rounding frame and now I can compare the numbers. So we're going to use the secret code cards to round. In second grade, they're going to expand the numbers of first grade, kindergarten. They're going to expand the numbers and now they're going to have to add. So let's just say I'm in second grade and they're adding three digit numbers and I'm building the number. Let's move these guys out of the way. Okay. And I'm building the number 224 and I have the number 300. 45, something like this. Okay. So here's my numbers. And now I say, I want you to add them up. Well, I can expand them. And this sets me up exactly for the expanded notation part of that adding. I could say, well, 200 plus 300 equals 500 and 20 plus 40 equals 60 and four and five equals nine. I have 569 and I can do it without even having to do ungrouping, regrouping or stacking numbers. It's expanded form. So it's showing me, look, this is what we're doing when we do something like the show all totals algorithm. Okay. Is I'm stretching them out and I'm building it and I can turn them over and I have the quantity drawing or the word name or the money to defend that thinking. So for our secret code cards, they're going to be used again in every grade level. They start with that purple tile in kindergarten and we, there's other number tiles, of course, that you could use, but these grow. You can see how the fronts match the back and there's always an emphasis on the quantity. That's the goal there. Okay, so let's look for just a moment on how you might now organize or store them, because one of the biggest issues that people have in using the secret code cards is it's so much 
work. So first of all, I want to remind you, if you're in the 2018, you've got digital iTools. You have them even use their Chromebooks or whatever their devices, and they can also build the number quickly using their iTools. If I come back here and I look at some other ways that I might store them. So take a look here. So I can see that I have my coupon organizer. This is like a first grade set because first grade's also using their strategy cards. And so they need, they have a lot of pockets for a lot of different things. So I get a dollar store coupon organizer and now I can organize it by ones, tens and hundreds and I can keep them organized. Cause it's, when they all go in the same baggie together we spend half our time just getting the cards in the right piles which in that defense, I actually think that that's not a bad thing. There we go. It's, it's not a totally bad thing because putting them in place value numbers is actually a good number sense activity, but it also just takes a long time. So I can sort them something like this. I use my large one. So you should get a large demonstration set of secret code cards for the teacher. And I put mine on key rings. Now you can't really do that for the small ones because they're just too small. I've tried to put them on key rings and the, the, uh, when I hole punch them for these rings, it just, they fall apart. So it doesn't totally work, but for these, for my teacher ones, it does work. So I can put the hundreds on a ring the tens on the ring, the ones on a ring. And then they just hang right there on my whiteboard because we'll use these, as you know, in kindergarten, first, second, second through second grade, we'll use them in our quick practice. And then we don't bring them back in quick practice after that, but we do use them to build that place value chart. Okay. So you can also see, then we have our secret code cards, which are our teacher cards there. All right. So then you have where you can see that they're using their money. They're building it. Okay. All of those things. So if you want to uh, tips on more ways to organize these, you know, the coupon organizer, the key ring, et cetera, you're going to just uh, comment below. You can comment link, but make, we'll make sure that we get the link to you. So when you look at some of these management tools, I also want you to think about like a baggy system. So I just was actually here and I'm in California. You can tell I'm in a hotel room and we were working with some dry creek teachers. We were talking about place value. So I have my baggies. I just don't have them close by. And I put all the secret code cards in a baggie and then I label the baggie. So the baggie is like labeled like 31. It's for a child 31. And every single one of my cards is labeled with a little mini 31 in the corner so that I have a management system for where all the cards getting right in the right bags that you have to have a system. Okay. Cause the cards do go literally everywhere. I have a lost and found. If someone finds a card, they just go put it in the lost and found. I stock the lost and found with extra copies of the, the secret code cards from like the student workbook or the teacher resource book. So there's always a set of copies in the lost and found. So if Johnny can't find his seven, it's not my problem. Solve your own problem, Johnny. And really it's because it's in the back of Johnny's desk. I just say, go to the lost and found. Even if Johnny doesn't find his seven, he's going to find a seven because I've stocked it with extras. But I also want you to consider not every child has to have their own set. Now in kindergarten, it is true. Kindergarten, everyone needs their own set. First grade, you use their own yellow cards. They have another version in for unit one. But other than that, it could be that they use their own cards like one time just to really practice building numbers. But then it can be like, I have a group of four and one kid has secret code cards and one kid has play money. And one kid has their whiteboard, right? Every kid could have a different tool. And then I'm going to say, here's your number build it using the tool that you have at your desk. They can work in partners. The whole point is that they're getting a concrete experience. So remember when we say when students build concepts, it should be, they can they build it? Can they draw it? Can they write about it? The secret code card is a way that we build place value understanding. We can expand it. We can add it that way. We can round it. All of that is showing what each value of the number is and then how we build into the place value digits. So don't get overwhelmed by the idea that all these cards are going to be all over your classroom. It's a short amount of time, but when you build it, when you first launch an activity or a, a concept with the secret code cards, you're anchoring an experience for them. They're going to be able to go back to that and remember, do you remember when you built the number with secret code cards, like decimals? Oh my gosh, you have to use the secret code cards. It will be life-changing in their understanding of decimal numbers and equivalencies. I promise you, but it doesn't mean I have to use the secret code cards every day. But when I anchored the learning and I started the learning with secret code cards, now I can keep refre referencing it and saying, do you remember when we built it with secret code cards? Because now they have an experience to go back to. I can have one kid in a group use them. I can say, I want you to do five problems in your workbook. One of them you have to show me with secret code cards. Like I don't have to do it. It's not all or nothing. It can be some of them are being used, some sets by a partner or work together in some problems, but just enough to make sure that we're really building strong number sense. And it all is with place value. 
Now, is there more to say about place value and expressions? Of course there is, but this is a big starter piece. I want to make sure that they can build it. So we build it with secret code cards. We draw it. We use the quantity drawings, right? So the, the 10 stick for the 10, the one circle for the one, the square for the hundreds. We have specific place value drawings. We're going to use on the back of the math expressions whiteboard with the dot array. Okay, so I'm building the quantity. I built it with secret code cards. I drew it on the dot array or on the whiteboard, and now I write it. Now I write it in numeric font form. 800 plus 20 plus 4 equals 824. I can do that mixed up if I'm in second grade. Okay, so all of those things are building solid place value understanding. Ask me a question. What is on your mind? What's something that's sticking out to you or a new learning or another way you organize? or manage it, let me know and put in the comments and then let me give you your action steps. Okay, here's what I want you to do. As we wrap up, I want you to think about these things. Download the material management guide. Okay, the link for that guide is going to show you all of the ways to organize your materials, to organize secret code cards, how to organize them in your classroom, how to organize your set from all my organizational systems. Okay, that's all in that material management in kindergarten. There's a lot for you there because you have so many materials in those purple tiles. There's some very particular ways that I think that if you organize them, you're going to like help your life out. I want you to organize your secret code cards. So if you got a big math expressions kit, they come in like these, it depends, some of you like in California, you get these baggies and they already are taken apart. Okay. Others of you, most of you don't have that. Most of you get like these stacks of cardstock that are laminated and then it's shrink wrapped and you have to take all that apart. And then you have to literally tear apart your cards. So for some of you, that's where they're at. They're still not even, have never even been opened or like broken apart. So I want you to organize them, get them out. This is a great number sense activity. Have your students help. Have some kids that want to come in for fun during lunch. Have some older helpers come in. Have it be like an intervention day where everyone's just, our job today is just to organize our secret code cards. There's so much math involved in that. Find out what you have, what you're missing, et cetera. Get them labeled, but get them ready so that even if you even just use them at like a small group table, you have them at your fingertips. When the lesson says use the secret code cards, you're using them. And that's your last action step. I want you to use them. It does not happen that often. So when it does, you know, you are building really strong place value with those secret code cards. All right, friends, let's go find those secret code cards. Bye for now. Thanks for coming.